Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Collegiate Call of Duty League. We're in our playoffs, and we're still in winners round one, but we're jumping into our second scheduled match, which will be the University of Purdue and the Boilermakers going up against the University of Texas at Arlington, listed as the Summit. This is going to be an interesting one because, again, a lot of favor has been thrown Purdue's way, the number two team out of the Midwest, going up against the UT Arlington squad that showed a lot of power through the Western Division but just weren't quite able to get the job done versus a couple of key matchups that they had uh, throughout teams like Grossmont, Grand Canyon, things of that nature. Tough game fives all the way through that. Again, a lot of games that were very, very tight throughout. But in this matchup, it's a totally different breed of caliber of team as Purdue has been a heavily dominating respawn team. Yep, Purdue finishing second in the Midwest Division, 16-1 and one as a win-loss record throughout all of that. They've only dropped eight maps in throughout the regular season. There are uh, very scary. Their pace has been set and has been, quite frankly, unmatched afar, apart from that just that one individual loss. And, well, when it comes down to their weakest part and their weakest game mode, you're probably looking at Search and Destroy. But for Purdue as a whole, uh, Vanish Tom, Kanani, Benji, uh, the player, not the production that's uh, slapping the sticks today, uh, Sauce and Proxy, uh, this team is star-studded, Benji included. This player will make or break hard points. This player forces out rotations, plays their spawns, flips out a multitude of areas. Yeah, they only have 48 seconds uh, average on the hill time too, but those 48 seconds that are on average for the time that they're on the hill, they turn their lives from about one to if not four at a clip, and then they just trade out for players such as Proxy uh, or Sauce to just exist on that hill for that much further. Okay, so as we dig into this a little bit further for Purdue, 17 and one in hard point in total through the regular season, 10 and one versus other playoff teams in the Midwest, of which eight of those wins came on Azir Cave and Gunrunner. So that's gonna be the first little bit of a test here for UT Arlington. Beyond that, UT Arlington also not very good at domination. So the respawn is gonna be key. This first map is gonna be key for UT Arlington. The good news is as you go to the second map, the search and destroy has been pretty sloppy from Purdue all year long. They're only seven and six in total from the Midwest, but a mere two and five versus other playoff teams in their division. Whereas for UT Arlington against other playoff teams in the West, they're an even four and four. So you really need to have a nice start here on this map number one, even better if you can find yourself the map number two afterwards. Try to get through that third map as best as you possibly can and see this set elongate. The longer this set goes, the better it is for UTA, but it has to start here on half the yard hard point for our first map. We have that first map, half the yard hard point. 50-50 split over top of the center. It's gonna be really good for P1, but what's gonna be most important here for UTA Summit is holding on to the P2 spawns. They're able to do that across the first initial gunfights. And they're able to exist here on P1 a little bit uh, closer than where Purdue might end up wanting it. So, I mean, for UTA Summit, a great set of first gunfights coming through their way. Purdue Esports, nowhere to necessarily be found. They are going to work this P1 hill. They're going to need it, considering that they're unable to break mid-map shift and work their way over to the tire shop. Mm, that's a four-man kill feed right there for Purdue, all of which had members in the warehouse, and nobody actually went for the exit. So now, maybe a missed opportunity. The only player that was alive for the Summit was Magic B-Man. He was the only player that was alive after that first push, and Purdue had an opportunity to maybe influence these second hard point spawns, but they kind of missed that window of opportunity, and now all of a sudden UTA set up, ready to go, trying to make sure that Purdue find absolutely no success on this second hill. Plus the fact that they already found 17 seconds in the first, it's not a bad total whatsoever. Full, full trades coming through, which again, even in a two for two, three for three trade, that's good for UTA who continue to spawn over towards Useless. Everyone tossing nades off spawn towards that warehouse door. And as long as Purdue doesn't ever find a favorable kill feed, you're going to feel pretty safe if you're UTA on the second hill. UTA, you said feeling pretty comfortable and safe inside the tire shop. There are the essential workers of P2. Purdue, on the other hand, might be looking to get themselves one last good go at this. You gotta be careful for how long that you overstay your time here. We're down to just scrap time. So it's gonna be it. Benji trading their life for two. It's not the break that you necessarily wanted. Omega's just been hanging out on the top side of Tire Shop. They are gonna be able to find themselves the utmost value of the time here on P2. So Purdue Esports, they pull themselves back off of respawn. They're going to be looking to holding on towards that smokestack area for the initial time on the P3. But most importantly, you gotta be trying to hold on to the top side of the docks building to influence P5 spawns at the same time. This is a great zone though for the Boilermakers doing a lot of work through office and the warehouse, making sure that the UTA Summit 
never has a full open avenue to get to the hill, but I say that, and streaking across the map is XO, who finds himself a kill inside the smokestack hardpoint and a little bit of a break. That will force Purdue back a touch, but Sauce comes back through as he's found four kills before he falls. Proxy on now five straight. Benji was on three straight. And the Boilermakers looking like they're going to fully control this third hard point. Not a great exit from UTA from P2 to P3. So they're going to have to make up some ground here, either in the late scrap 20 of this uh, hard point uh, underneath the smokestack, or they need to find a way to get the initial 20 uh, of the office. Uh, ideally, you'd like both, and they're currently set up in a position to possibly do just that but Purdue making the rotation from the back side of the office has found a way not only to break their way into this green building but they've also dealt with a player working for the scrap time hill so now it's just a 30 second lead for EPA initial time is going to go over to Purdue here on P4 and again those spawns just so influential coming through from UTA summit uh, yet again shifts and they're able to find themselves the spawns back behind the van right over by the p5 area but player number seven that's going to be vanished tom working their way to the p5 right now this is all while purdue are winning the gunfight initially on towards p4 inside the office building they're still being able to keep this point contested for a time being now with 30 seconds left it goes back over to uta but purdue esports through all of that jumble going in inside the bottom side of office have worked their way for the p5 spawns they are so working their way this is a very tight game coming in towards p4 with just 15 seconds left benji's right there for three and purdue esports are finding themselves the value that they've been looking for since the initial 50 50 split on p1 Summit are having a difficult time deciding how are we exiting p4 here boys we've been stuck inside the office for way too long they're finally going to make the rotation to get through the warehouse and put some pressure on the yellow side of the map of this fifth hard point, of which a beautiful kill on the proxy at range for Magic b -Man. He'll find himself another off the spawn, but nobody kills with Kanani in the top window, so it's just down to Linga. How big can you go with this SMG? He's only able to pick up one kill. Now it goes over to Omega. He's the one to try to contest. A full flood coming from the backside for UTA in the summit, and they might have enough. It's down to one more 1v1. Kid Dragon able to take it. That's going to be at least a contest and a small break for the Summit. I, you might think of overhyping at the moment, but it's a big one for the Summit as Purdue will retake the hill. But the fact that Purdue is not able to take a full 60 on this key fifth hill is massive for the University of Texas at Arlington. But take a look at the players now for Purdue on the east side of the map. Player number seven exclusively vanished. Tom influenced P5 spawn shift. They're looking to influence P2. Trades coming through on the north side over by that forklift. Gonna need a little bit more than that for the spread that Purdue can currently find themselves in on this match. You got a player on the hill. You have a player over by P2. Players on P1. And now this is going to be very tough to try to convincingly flip the spawns. It might just go north and south. As you see UTA now spawning over by the office side. But initial time on P1 is good for Purdue as they finally eclipse the lead. Getting the break is more than necessary for UTA. Just to keep this contested, Omega's going to have to play their life convincingly as Purdue have convincingly flipped the spawns over towards the P2 area. And with 30 seconds left, Purdue's making an attempt to try to get into the warehouse and stop some of this time. That's a three-man wipe. All of a sudden, number five, that's XO. He's made his way past the middle of the map. Magic Beam had tried to get there with him, and here comes the full flood out of the warehouse. But unfortunately, the kills were not as convincing as they needed to be, as now Purdue has held off that initial push-through attempt, even though we'll be looking at right around uh, about a 50-point lead here for UTA and the Summit. The Boilermakers, if they can find a full 60 at the second hard point, they will not just be right back in the game, but they could potentially retake the lead. Could potentially retake the lead. I mean, we know P2 is probably the most swing point out of all five of them here on Hackney Yard. It's really hard to get players off unless they overextend themselves, or if UTA find themselves the pinch of the lifetime. Initial gunfight. Kills going back and forth, but now going in the favor for Purdue. They're able to continuously defend Proxy as they're just hanging out on the top side of the tire shop with 40 seconds left. If they get the rest of this time gear shift, this could just spiral out of control. UTA have to be aware of this, and they have to be able to find themselves value in 3, 4, and 5 to not only be able to work their way back in towards the lead, but be able to keep oh. this game relatively close. Big kill coming through from Sauce on the OE, and this could just be a little bit more of a dent in the side that UTA were hoping to deal with goes that lead swap 10 point differential now favoring purdue for the first time this game it'll actually get to right around a 20 point maybe almost a 30 point lead here as purdue will be right around the 180 mark 
So for the UTA Summit, they did not do a great job exiting from the second hard point, getting to the smokestack last rotation. Can they do a good job setting themselves up initially for P3? The answer is absolutely not. Look at where all the Purdue members are. They've actually cut their way through the office, and now they're spawning warehouse. Sure, the Summit will sit on the third hard point for now, but this is all that mid-map contest that has completely been negated by Purdue because they got across the map so quickly from the tail end of that last 15 seconds of the second hard point. Sabi going back and forth. Purdue able to at least get themselves back on towards the hill. Exo's going to be right there to find two before going down. Omega and Magic are going to be able to find at least two more. But always trading out their lives. Purdue Esports are at least winning out the gunfights. Not convincingly here as it typically goes back and forth across mid-map. But at least it gives themselves the time of day to work back over towards the office side to be hoping to get this initial time. But keep in mind that Exo had worked their way over towards the office side. They are low, but this dead silence is going to make them relatively silent and very fast as well as they're able to find Benji on the top side. This is going to be influential now for UTA to get this initial time on towards the office and potentially be looking towards breaking back into the lead and taking this game. That's a clean wipe coming through. And again, dealing with Benji versus Massive. He's 32 and 23, for Christ's sake. He's been having a mammoth of a hard point here. He's going to try to do the work again by himself. He's going to get shut down once more. And again, that was a solo play from Benji. Maybe feeling a touch too of a hot hand as he tries to make some kind of spark happen on the fourth hard point here. One more attempt for Kanani. He will break in with 30 seconds. But again, UTA still spawning behind this hard point. We'll just keep flooding through it. So now both teams above 200 points. We're going to go to a very pivotal fifth rotation. Omega's worked his way into the back. He finds Ooh. himself two kills before being traded, which again will give some space for the University of Texas at Arlington to potentially contest this, if not break it very, very early on. These kills have to come in for Purdue if they want to try to find a way to tie this game and potentially win the game on this fifth hard point. Kid Dragon goes big for two. Vanish Tom's going to be right there to take down Linga, and now a double hit from the south side is going to end up coming through. Kanani's able to take down Omega, and Benji's right there to take down Kid Dragon. So big kills coming through in favor for Purdue as they're able to take not only this hill for initial time, but they're able to at least fend off UTA as they're spawning over by the office side. And wisely enough, they're waiting for the respawns to come back through mid-map before they give themselves one last good hit at this. And with 30 seconds left on the hill, if they got that break and those kills started coming through, we were going to be looking at not only a spawn flip, but an ending game in favor for UTA, but a fantastic defense of P5 for Purdue thus far. Now this is the best attempt for the UTA Summit. They wait for everybody, and now they're full flooding as a five-man squad. It comes down to the 1v1. Benji, you need him to go. What? He takes down five, but look at the spawns. Everybody from Texas Arlington spawns close to yellow. So now they've gotten enough time to not just contest, but potentially take the scrap. Look at the rotation. Everything's going to come down to what happens in the warehouse. Exo wins a big 1v1 versus Proxy. But again, Benji's on his way in, and you feel like he's going to have to be the guy to clutch things up for Purdue. 240. 221. Purdue will put up the warehouse, and now it's down to one more potential hit. You gotta get there. You have to touch 248, 249. No one's gonna get there in time. And Benji, with the big play at the end, puts enough of a lead in Purdue's back pocket to win the rotation for P1 and take the first map 250 to 221. You know, for the first set of hills, the first rotation shift, that was uh, not looking real good for Purdue. Uh, UT Arlington being able to showcase their abilities and being uh, holding on towards the P2 area and finding themselves clean breaks onto three and four. We were looking at a very scary game, but then Purdue Esports able to find themselves contest. And then you look at Benji dropping 40 kills, on 40 Hackney and 27 Yard. on Hackney Yard hard point with a minute and 42 <laughs> hill time. Yep. This is why I highlighted this player, man. Yeah, he can sit there on the hill. He'll get the hill time, sure. Proxy's right there at a minute and 25, but trading out your life for one to four? Yeah, that's that's the sub player of your dreams. And that was, again, not just a map that you needed. I feel like you wanted to win a few to UTA, but you needed to win it. They're four and one in total on that hard point of Hackney Yard, a 250-245 win versus Grand Canyon there. Uh, they were able to obviously beat Oklahoma State, no problem. They even kept it close with Texas A&M Maroon, and they beat UT Dallas on that map. For Purdue, that, I imagine that was not their pick. They've only played the map three times, of which two of those wins came against both Bowling Green and St. Clair, and that was early on in the season. So 
Uh, tough to really say how things were necessarily going there, but it makes it for a very dire straight here for UTA. Now you have to win the search and destroy. Otherwise, you're looking at a potential 3-0 because, again, we know they're not very good at domination. That's their biggest weak point throughout the entirety of the season. We've mentioned a lot of times that, yeah, they have kept this essentially close in the Western Division versus teams that were stronger than them. But the big problem came down to if they were to just win some of those dominations, they win some of those matchups. Uh, flat out. I mean, you got a close loss uh, versus UT Dallas where you essentially got blown out and St. Petro domination. And that's where we're headed to it potentially for map number three would be St. Petro for the Dom. But here's the deal. At Starkloff Peak, search and destroy here proper. We know what the storyline is for Purdue. That's, that's pretty right. much one of the only maps that they play. And even with that, they still have a hard time finding wins. So uh, this has to be a map that UT Arlington needs to take away from Purdue if they want to have a chance in this series, in my opinion. And this is the this is the map that's going to shut down Benji just off of elongation alone until they get this, uh, the dead silence push coming through on the trench side, potentially, uh, yeah. or mid-map through the missile launch. This is where Benji can pull out that MP5 and find the utmost value. But on the other hand, for uh, UT Arlington, yeah, this is going to be their time to shine. This is where they can start finding themselves momentum. Now, at the top of this game in uh, the second one of the evening here, Shift, we had already mentioned that this obviously is Purdue week, Purdue's weakest game mode. This is their weakest by far. And for some reason, they keep on coming back to Arkloff Peak. But this, on the other hand, this is going to be Linga's time to shine. Uh, performs yeah. much better on Search and Destroy rather than Hardpoint. Linga currently sits at a 1.31 KD overall uh, alongside with Omega, who's at 1.53. Uh, the only player that's actually negative in, K in KD is uh, actually uh, Kid Dragon is at 0.91. But with everybody else being at 0.115 and above, yeah, this team is willing to give yourself the space and just let you run at them, which is Purdue's profile. Just run yeah, at them. Really get, them to get the kills, find the value in just outgunning your opponents. But this team of UT Arlington, this is going to be their time to shine. And as we load in here to SD Arkloff Peak, it's going to be uh, UTA on the offense side first. Mm, or I'm sorry, for actually, Purdue. Yeah, Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. no, they, they have names are backwards, colors are good. I would assume I can't really yeah. tell the difference. Colorblind problems, but it's going to be Vanished on the goes down first. Traded away, though. This is again Purdue. When they played Illinois, they made a lot of attempts to get over towards this B bomb site. And they're doing that here early again. Magic Beam at big win versus Proxy at range. We'll keep the cemetery technically in the possession of UTA, but Soft's getting the bomb down. It just comes down to can they hold and bunker up in this hill? And how about this, Kid Dragon? Nearly almost able to find a collateral, but Sauce will survive. A 1v Technical 4 situation in hand for him. Has to wait for the regen. It's not going to come into play as Exo is able to find the kill, no problem. And that'll be an easy defuse. And again, that's the big storyline that I encourage everyone to watch. Purdue, consistently, all B, almost all the time for their offense. Will they continue to try this forehead rushing into B? Or will they start to play for numbers? Because like you mentioned proper, Purdue doesn't know the meaning of hesitation. They just go straight at you and hope that they win the gunfight. <laughs> Quite literally. Hey, there's there's no puns. There's no jokes around it. <laughs> it's just Purdue's profile on, on search and destroy. Especially on our clock because it's really the only uh, takeaway that we have for them. Almost have to think that if this was Gunrunner search that you might be able to find value in like that, but not on our clock peak. Uh, on our clock peak. Purdue Esports, though, on defense. Maybe they might have the ability to be able to find themselves first pick potential here. With UTA playing as passive as they did on their defense, on offense at the same time, it's going to be waiting for Purdue to get themselves up. But Kanani finds first blood on the Linga. It's going to be a big kill mid map. It's a very interesting spread. You got two players on the north side and three players still pushing on the trench for could potentially be a bait and switch. But with Kid Dragon taking down Benji, this could potentially be all the information that Purdue needs that the bomb is in fact moving towards A. Very patient play for UTA. A lot of it coming off Omega, which he finds a couple of shots under the shoulder of Tom. You also got that play up the middle. Magic B-Man will be cut down. And a lot of this offensive hit was hoping for the success of that flank play through the middle of the map. Now it's the 3v4, nearly a 2v4. Tagged up heavily was the bomb carrier of Kid Dragon, but Omega punishes the extra peak from Tom. And now after a couple more trades come through, it's a 2v3. Proxy holding the hostile window, realizing that he's avoided the angle from Exo initially. We'll find a couple of kills. Exo resorting now to a pistol. He's got dead sounds. He's going to try to make the play through the flank. We'll pick up an AR. And it's going to be him versus two on the flank side. He's been scouted out, nearly gets a lock on, but Purdue will survive on this defense and will tie things up one round apiece. Interesting. 
can see the mid map and series adaptation coming through from UTA going on forward. You gotta respect it coming through from Purdue, just pulling themselves back, finding themselves really well placed angles. Can end up being a very interesting showcase from here on out. But when it comes down to the offense, too, I think my question is just the same as yours. Are we taking this bomb, yeah. Purdue? We going back towards B? Doesn't look that way. They're poisoned to actually push this thing towards A, where they're just going to end up putting Kanani to make some noise over in the big blue house towards the B bomb site. And along with that, Purdue, Smokes included, are just going to try to push themselves forward. Benji pops dead silence, pushes on forward, tries to find themselves the angle, but just laying in wake. Lingo was just waiting. His foot got stepped on, and he bit back. The snake in the grass is Lingo. And I guess I don't really understand that setup from Purdue. You got Proxy, who's convincingly doing a lot of work so far with the sniper rifle. You just smoked him off, and Proxy never actually took the angle over towards the trench. So I guess I'm just a little bit lost. You're not using your scope for any sort of information. Sauce is going to bait out a gunfight, which I don't think he anticipated actually coming through. Linga will take the kill. That nade's going to find absolutely nothing from Proxy, who's now left with a 1v5 situation. It's just about how hot will he keep this sniper rifle, as this round will surely go the way of the summit. Unless a couple shots will ring through, he's going to realize it's being blank. Pistol shots are decent, but the AR is just better at that range. And University of Texas at Arlington will take their second defense without a problem 2-1. Well, well, well. We know Arclaw Peak is definitely a defender's heavy map here, Shift. That that goes without saying. Uh, but at the same point in time, too, I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. I don't know what the heck you were necessarily looking for. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty normal, let's put it that way, for a defensive player to pull out a sub and just lay down in the trench side. I'm thinking all the way up to Atlanta phase uh, where Simp uh, will end up finding themselves valuing that play. Sometimes they don't, but I mean, we got a player just walking over top of you, Benji. He needs to be a little bit more careful there. Vanish Tom is at 0-3, by the way. Exo is going to pull out the scope yet again. Going to wait for potentially a cross top of the mound, but it's Magic B, man, that finds Kanani for first blood. It's a big kill. It actually opens up B site a little bit more, as even though Sauce is over right outside the cemetery. And again, because there's nobody watching from inside the B house, this is a free rotation. You're trusting Proxy to hold it with a sniper rifle from an angle that is not going to actually give him a lot of information as far as it's anyone pushed through. And look at this. B-Man is making his way through the B house, and he's going to sit here and say, boys, there's nothing here. If we've got a smoke, Smoke out the A house and cut across. Come over and join me. It's free tea party out here. Finally coming in is Vanish Tom. He's going to try to make a play. Proxy gets cut down by Magic B-Man. And now all of a sudden, as Kid Dragon finds another pick, this actually turns into a little bit of a bait because everyone thinks that, yeah, UTA is hitting the B-Bomb site. Because there's been kills everywhere, though, they say, well, we can actually hit whatever bomb site we so choose. And now it's a five on two in favor of UTA. And they're likely going to take our first successful offense of the of the round or the, or the game, rather, I should say. It's absolutely going to be the case. Sauce has 30 seconds to play with. And, well, they're not going to be able to find any sort of shots to start working their way there. UTA Summit finds themselves up two rounds, three to one. Like you said, taking the first offensive round here on Arclaw Peak. It's influential in this match. It's uh, influential altogether. Again, being a very defender's heavy map is Arclaw Peak. But at the same point in time, there's shift. Yeah, gotta end up being looking at the top of the S and D talk. This uh, this is not exactly Purdue's strong suit. Not being able to find value and winning out their gunfights. I hope they know at some point in time that they actually don't respawn here on Search and Destroy at the same time, as they're just absolutely just trying to bulldoze their way in towards the faces of UTA Summit. Proxy pulling out the scope is at least at three and four. Gonna have to see if they can end up finding themselves a first pick. So they're looking over top of the trench side. The only other player that they could potentially be looking at over there would be Omega, but it's going to be a B rush coming through. Smoke comes through. Clear off. Middle of the map and potentially a rush coming on forward here. Sauce with Dead Silence is going to break right through the door, but doesn't check the corner and loses no his head break. because of it. I mean, Benji's trying to make a solo play through the top floor. He never goes for the trade. He gets sniped by XO across the middle of the map. Oh, Purdue. You need to fix your search badly. I mean, we're not finding trades right now inside of the B rush. That's a huge mistake. Kanani gets gunned at range. It's just down to proxy for another 1v5. It's it's becoming very frustrating to watch. I'll tell you that much as proxy continues to make sure that his hand stays hot with a sniper rifle. But these kills at the end of the round are going to be nothing. Oh, boy. 
I mean, that's just like simple SMD tactics, right? You can bring yourself all the way down to 2v2 SMD, 3v3, 5v5 variants. Gotta get those trades coming through the door. It has to be a double challenge yeah. through that opening door. Yeah, you can't just go for a Dead Silence hopeful push through the top side of Grandma's house. That's not that's not how you assault the B bomb site at all. Uh, if you're not gonna end up going for the slow play on the outside to get that cross angle onto the cemetery, you gotta get that trade initially when you go inside there. Purdue though, absolutely reeling are down three rounds. TA Summit able to piece together a multitude of rounds, but Proxy's gonna get the better of XO. It's gonna take them down, even though Exo saw the flashlight coming through, but really wanted to challenge that. I'm not gonna lie, I would have done the same thing. Purdue Esports, though, with a numbers advantage. Kid Dragon's gonna actually pick up the AX50 from their fallen comrade and gonna hope to find themselves a little bit more value. But this is really what's really tough here on Arkloth Free here, Ship. You get yourself first blooded on offense, it's gonna slow up the pace of the offensive side, but you only have 50 seconds to play with. Arkloth Peak will punish you for hesitation. Into the door, Kid Dragon again gonna hopefully take an unexpected proxy again, not anticipating there's gonna be another sniper on the table. He sees the head of one, maybe he doesn't actually, he thinks it's a rock. And this is awkward because I think Benji, I thought he saw him as well, but I guess he hasn't. And beyond that, you also got Banished Tom who will eventually communicate to his teammate. Proxy though has fallen, and here comes a flank from Linga. He's got dead silence, he's gonna pinch up this bomb site completely. If he can just take down one, that's gonna be enough. Benji falls now, all of a sudden, it's gonna be a 3v3, but pressure oh. on the bomb site itself. But the 1v1s are not one post mortem, and with that, Purdue will survive through a defense. But you should anticipate that if you get the opening snipe. You should be taking the round away if you're playing your numbers correctly, and it still came down to a moment where UTA still found their way through the back line of Purdue. Be interested to go back towards that uh, that end of the map and just really try to figure out how many tacticals and lethals that we still had left on the side for UTA. To try to, if not, find more value to where the players were hiding at, but at least try to find themselves a mid-map uh, rotation, even towards the beat bomb site, because Purdue did get the first pick over through the broken building. Could have potentially had broadened themselves mid-map. Proxy's gonna keep the scope. He's gonna wait for Exo potentially to poke through the top side of Hostel, where Proxy was sniping defensively for Purdue. But on the other hand, you see on the trench side, it's gonna be Purdue that just started marching on forward. Proxy finds XO again. First blood, it is XO by way of scope. Benji's right there to find Omega after the trade comes through from Omega on the sauce. So one player advantage here for Purdue. They got a lot of map pressure coming on forward, and they're gonna be able to get the plant because of it. Watch this flank, though. I'm just going to be man trying to make his way. He takes down Proxy for the initial. Now for UTA. Don't do anything too brack. Wait for this flank to get here. Link is going to find one. Kid Dragon's made his way over. He's going to get information that the player is sitting out in the trenches. And now it's just down to Benji. He doesn't know which way to look. Left, right, upside down, inside out. Doesn't make a difference. UTA Summit with a beautiful retake. Again, credit to Magic B-Man. He's 9-2 on the map, but it all comes through this time. Simply due to the fact that he wins the 1v1 versus Proxy on the flank. Just thinking you gotta look inside out and you have to like really look at yourself deeply. Just gauge where can I trust that this kill is gonna come from. It's not gonna come through anywhere, unfortunately. It's just very tough. Map point here, UTA. And again, uh, to no one's surprise, Purdue, they're not strong on search and destroy. But even though, I mean, Proxy has been finding themselves first blood a little bit of a fumble of not having a player watch that long flank yeah. coming on through. It can't be your scope. Obviously, they have to look over the shoulder of the bomb site. It's got to be a player with an automatic weapon to cover your snipe on that flank while the others pop dead silence. They rush through the smoke. They assault the bomb point. UTA on offense are looking to switch things up. They're rushing towards the B bomb site area. This is going to be heavily guarded, though. Two players for Purdue are currently sitting over here, but not in a prime position. Couldn't even get the shots off in time. Sauce goes down three kills in favor for UTA. Kid Dragon still has the bomb. Is in the front lawn. Nani's able to find at least one trade onto XO. Proxy's right there to find mm. Magic B-Man. This is starting to fall apart at the scene for UTA to close out this map. Simply put, we're just being too cute with it. Get the bomb down. You've got the B-Site. They looked like they wanted to try to flip it back over to A. Omega with a glorious gunfight versus Kanani, and now they're realizing that, okay, maybe the right play is to flip this behind. Not going to make much of a difference. UTA able to take a 6-2, but at a certain point, might be a little bit too cute. Just get it in, get it down. You've got the numbers advantage. Why try to finesse that? But it doesn't make a difference here because, simply put, Purdue still has a lot of woes and a lot of work to be done on their search and destroy. And let's be candid. They got 
work on our claw of peak and that's not the first time not the second time not the third time not even the fourth or the fifth time that's the sixth time we've had to say that so far this season i was honestly just hoping you were going to keep going uh but you know i couldn't I, statistics <laughs> wouldn't let me uh, <laughs> <laughs> omega went 10 and 3 by the way linga at 7 and 4 yeah xl went 4 and 4 they were getting out sniped by proxy who went 7 and 8 leading their team four kills but, I mean, Purdue, like you said, they got a lot to work on. I mean, they're working too fast. They're trying to – you talked about UTA being cute in that last round, too. Purdue just trying to be way too cute altogether. I bring myself back to that B-bomb side of Salt. You end up working through that that main door with Sauce, and they don't get traded out? I just don't understand. Why Benji was working their way through the backside trying to go from a miracle play to happen while nobody was covering even from the cemetery. It was just very interesting, all things included, to go back to your previous point for being too cute. Yeah, UTA, you got to be careful of those moments in time because a stronger search and destroy your team will absolutely punish you for such mistakes. And again, it's one of those instances in that round that you're highlighting for Purdue when you're trying to bust through those doors. Not only are you by yourself, but you've got a sniper rifle that thinks he's the one watching from top blue yeah. and an AR that thought, well, no, I'm watching from top blue. <laughs> the coordination, the setup. Everybody just top blue. <laughs> Everybody now. It's, it's, it's not looking good for Purdue. And that's where, again, this team is going to, I think, face its struggles if they do make it past this matchup in specific. They would have to go up against the winner of Grossmont and Northern Iowa, which currently, this is an update for you guys, Grossmont is currently up two maps to nil. Um, let's take a look at our, actually, if we take a look at our top-sided bracket, we've got a lot of games to kind of update you guys on as far as what's been going on around the playoffs of the uh, Midwest and the West. Uh, Concord at the very top up against Oklahoma State. It was a 250 to 0 a, to 150, or sorry, not 250 to 0, 250 to 157, <laughs> and then a 6 to 2 for that two map lead. UT Dallas having no problem here with Butler, 250 170, the hard point, 6 1 the search. Illini Orange, no problems at all with Oregon, 250 to 87 the first, 6 to 4 the second. Texas AM Maroon, no problem as you would anticipate versus St. Clair, 250 to 75. Bowling Green and Grand Canyon has yet to start. And then, like I mentioned, Grossbond currently in a 2-0 up against Northern Iowa. We'll set things to a small break here, though, as we're ready to go into map number three. Again, for this one, Purdue, you figure this is a map that you need to and should win, as they have been very good in the domination so far this series. But for UT Arlington, you're hoping to make a show out of this respawn, as this has been their weakest point throughout all of their map mode combinations throughout the year. And that will have to change if they want to try to find an upset versus Purdue Boilmakers coming up next in map number three. Welcome back to the CCL in our winner's round one of our playoffs. University of Texas at Arlington going up against the University of Purdue, or Purdue University, I should say. It's the proper way of explaining it. My hold shift with me is proper. And with this, currently, it's a 1-1 map count. As UTA was able to take the search and destroy Purdue in the first hard point, able to squeak one out in a tight one. And this is where things could completely change up because UTA have not been good on domination through their regular season. It's been their worst mode, but more importantly, this has been their worst map as well as they need to have something closer, you feel, for Purdue to avoid going down 2-1 in the series. They've kept it close, though, here, Shift. Uh, not necessarily this map, like you said, not necessarily their strongest one, but on domination as a whole. So, I mean, that's what you got as a saving grace, especially coming off of that 6-2 victory on Arklov Peak. Again, we were not expecting for Purdue to win that uh, by any means necessary, but take a look just right off of spawn. Uh, UTA Summit, yeah, the kill feed starting to go their way at a certain degree, but Purdue Esports doing a great job of anchoring out the C-spawn area, and they're able to put Benji over towards the A flag to neutralize that bad boy. So it's going to be an A versus B flag. UTA holding on to B, Purdue still existing on towards C, not fully committing towards capturing A, but the spawns have unfortunately flipped momentarily you still got two players for purdue over by this hazmat building again doing a great job as sauce there are four and oh maybe not the utmost engagements but that's just because they're doing a great job of being the anchor and take a look here at what purdue is trying to do they're wrapping all the way through water if you're going to set up a full dominant spawn trap this is the way to do it you essentially send someone streaking through the backside of river make sure you're holding on to the backside of blue square from lion and as well to the sea flag and then you start going from north to south almost like a soccer defensive line which is moving together to essentially enforce the spawn trap onto uta in that apartment complex which is what's currently happening so kid dragon is in a really tough spot and a really pivotal one as he needs to win both kills in the middle of the map and he does just that a lifeline extended here for uta as they will avoid being triple capped for now 
Purdue Esports, though. They're doing such a great job just trading off four members that are going to be looking to anchor off on the C flag. Sauce is going to get cut down as they try to cross over towards the ambi, but they actually spawn over by the C flag. This is still while players were defending the A flag in that area. And now UT are spawning in over by P1. So what do you do with your resources? Omega goes ahead and just makes that decision that they have to give themselves a home flag. Benji mid map is going to be able to piece together three for this life before getting caught down is at seven and five. And this just means that Vanish Tom can drop down from the heavens of the restaurant to complete that capture. And now it's going to be a CD oh, hold oh, chasing Tom. with a ship. He's got to be able to chase down Magic B, man. Oh, that was a horror story right there within a kill. Get Dragon though, once again, he's eight and four. He's making all the plays for his team. He's doing that here once again towards the backside of C. Proxy thinks about going back towards the C flag and then says, never mind, we should be okay. And then actually turns his attention in second guessing fashion and gets rewarded with the kill. The A flag will have to be what UTA had to resort to. But again, Kanani is making this play from the riverside. This is when you can make this play happen. You've got Sauce watching the backside of C. You've got Benji watching the backside of the lion. If you are to make a play for a potential triple cap, that's the way you do it. And Purdue are really executing nicely here as we're through the majority of this first half. And it's a convincing Purdue lead if you have 90 seconds to play. 90 seconds left to play. Two flags in the home of UTA. Three players are going down, though. They're doing a great job of controlling mid-map. Trading back. Exo is going to come back and be looking to avenge their fallen comrade of Linga. Finds Benji. So being able to control this mid-map area, now you got to start working your way into the hazmat building. But Purdue, because of the mid-map coverage that UTA found themselves in, spawn over by the A flag. And now they flip that back into their name. This gives UTA the open opportunity to get back on towards the C flag. They just have to deal with Vanish Tom. They're able to do so, but Tom is able to find two before going down themselves. That trophy system not really finding the value that they were hoping for. Quite unfortunate for Kid Dragon, but it's still going to be a C flag flip coming through. For yeah, UTA, like question mark? Be, yeah, there it, it is. There's the kill to follow up. And again, while all this has happened, the B flag has stayed in the possession of the summit. So it looks like this back half, well, I'll say back 30, 45 seconds of the first half should lead to an okay ending for UTA. But again, it's not been a good first half for them. Purdue really taking command of this map from the get-go. As we got the final 20 to go to play for here, UTA just really need to find a way to at least neutralize this B flag, if not flip it, to try to salvage this from getting to about a 40-point lead for Purdue. But with those kills coming in the middle of the map, it looks like it'll stay in Purdue's favor, and we will come to the first half conclusion with right around a 40-point lead for the Purdue Boilermakers. It's going to lead for 91 to 53 at the half. Now you're going to be looking towards Purdue that much further. Again, this is their profile. It's going to run and gun. And being able to do so, they were uh, kind of just trapping UTA uh, about, I count maybe two, if not three times, P1 in the B flag area. Uh, the Purdue were convincingly being able to keep two players over by the C flag area looking at Sauce. Uh, doing a great job off of their first life, just being the anchor that you definitely want on your team to hold that spawn area. So now starting on the A flag, Purdue are asked with the task to just break past mid-map to try to flip these spawns, but they can still win off the A flag. It's going to be more difficult to do so, and you know that Purdue Esports here, Alan, are going to be able to win this initial gunfight and then take the map pressure away from UTA. You already have Sauce working through the worker walk. Oh, and with that push to the middle of the map, Exco is actually going to spawn out towards A. Fortunately, those teammates do win the gunfights in the backside of C, so the rest of the squad will actually spawn C. So this is an opportunity. If Exo can get the neutral at A plus one, one more gunfight, it could lead to a potential moment of triple capture. But again, we see it. Kanani gets the win versus Exo over towards A. Purdue spawning by the apartment complex, going to make their way over towards the C flag, hoping to take one more good shot towards a potential spawn flip. But it gets shut down down by XO off of his second life. And with that, UTA, much better hold here. They restabilize from C, and now you've got big numbers advantages in the middle of the map. But everyone's just staying too much in the middle. Get into this kitchen. Get into the restaurant. Run circles around that L-hole. Keep Purdue guessing where you are. The minute that you just kind of sit and stay stationary is the moment that Purdue's going to be able to find kills, find favorable trades, and start making it influence not just towards the B flag, as they are right now, but potentially also towards your home flag of C. That's 100% the case. Kid Dragon now working their way across lines is at least going to be able to stuff Purdue from trying to work this B flag area. And doing just like you asked, Shift, they're going to be working their way up to the restaurant. Oh. The hip fire is going to find Proxy, but Sauce 
coming in through the window was going to be able to take down Kid Dragon. And if Dragon was able to piece together those two kills, that would have been influential for UTA to start working a potential spawn camp there onto Purdue. But now you have Lingo working this A flag proxy is going to get them off of it. And now you're going to end up having Purdue that did flip the B flag. Had Kid Dragon trying to get that back in their name, but all of these kills are still good for Purdue as they start working towards the hazmat building. An AB hold here for Purdue is good as they're still in the lead. A little bit of a tight moment here as UTA do spawn a couple of members through P1. A couple tried to go towards B, a couple tried to go towards A. None of them finding a terrible amount of success. And now all of a sudden, again, Purdue in control of the Riverwalk, trying to make their way through the C side of the map. They get a kill from Sauce on the back side of the Flower House. And with that, this could potentially be a uh, full spawn flip coming through. But more importantly, we're in the fourth quarter of the domination. We're looking at a 34-point gap, which means, again, for the UTA Summit, you need to get two flags and you need them now. But more importantly, again, Purdue, their understanding of how they could potentially get a triple crap is absolutely outstanding. They're doing a really good job of potentially giving them an opportunity. But again, when you try to commit to that play, you're left short-sided in numbers. And with UTA finding five essential individual gunfights, they will not just retake the B flag, but they will give themselves the C spawns with the flag as well. If you're a UTA, if you're the summit, you have to then push through the restaurant. You have to find a triple cap. You have to continuously work this magic with a minute and 45 left in this last remaining quarter in this domination of St. Petrograd. And it's just going to be really rough from here on now. Benji's working mid-map along with Kanani on the side with Vanish Tom over by the Ambi. And this is going to just be tough. Benji through the smoke just pulls out the shiv, just whisks in the air, but it's okay because it's just going to be Purdue convincingly taking down multiple members of UTA. Exo is able to find themselves. I almost wanted to say that kill, but unable to at least close things out. But with 144 to 105, 145 now to 107, 112 left in the time clock here shift. Purdue Esports are looking to close this out and taking this win. Yep, the term mathematically impossible comes into play here again in case you're a little bit newer to the scene with domination. If you've got a one flag advantage, you're generating 12 points a minute. You do the math, times that by three over 60 seconds. You're not going to be able to make up a gap of 41 points. So this one will come to a conclusion with Purdue Esports taking it. And I will say this. UTA did a decent job to at least stay in this game for the most part. They stayed in the game for the most part. But you're sure. seeing an element from Purdue where they're not just understanding the basics of how to play Petro Domination. They're understanding how to take the basics to not just the second tier, but then the third. From being able to not just control the C flag, but how you successfully set yourself up to control both C and B easily. But then the third tier to that is, what do we do to not just find a neutral at A, but potentially spawn trap our opponents? The way you do that is by way of the Riverwalk. And Purdue showcased that they had a very strong understanding of that. And here in this win, it will be all right around this. I mean, this game's again over and no arrows are stopping moving. So it'll be right around a 160, well, it's 163 to 129 will be the final score here as Purdue will roll through Petro. And again, that does not bode well for UTA, who are now forced to not just take map number four, but they'll have to take another search to destroy from Purdue in map number five. Well, if you are UTA, you're definitely looking towards that SND. You know that Purdue are not the greatest on search and destroy. But again, Gunrunner Hardpoint Shift. If you can drop 40 kills, Benji, on Hackney Yard <laughs> Hardpoint, oh man, am I super excited to see what the work that this young individual from Purdue is going to be able to put on a show on Gunrunner Hardpoint. I mean, you're looking at a multiple of rotations coming on through forcing out p2 spawns but most importantly three to four and then four to five you need sub presence you need that pressure we're talking about boiler room we're talking about green we're talking about that a dom flag area to where you could just force your way into the front doors of the warehouse yeah benji's going to be the player to watch out for 100 percent. oh absolutely the case and speaking of things to watch out for we'll take a look quickly if we can at our top side of our winner's bracket here as we're continuing to dig through with a multitude of matches that are going on a little couple of reports coming through Concord Maroon, as you would anticipate, do take the 3-0 versus Oklahoma State. None of those maps really all that close. Arizona State technically gifted the win as Liberty Red could not participate in the playoffs this year. UT Dallas, a 3-0 versus Butler. Texas A&M Maroon, a 3-0 versus the Saints Academy. 
Although I will say the domination was within about 30 points, so not necessarily a blowout there for Texas A&M Maroon. And then yeah. going on here on this one, obviously we're seeing this is a 2-1 for Purdue. Grossmont able to take a 3-0 versus Northern Iowa. And on the other side, the one that I did not mention is the Illini Orange versus Oregon game. It is going on currently on the Bravo stream. Illinois started off hot with two maps, bouncing back on the domination, though, was Oregon with a 160-148 win. And they're currently locked in a pretty good one. On Gun Under Hardpoint, the current score is 179-170 in favor of the University of Oregon with Illinois trying to battle back here. You can check out the tail end of that fourth map on the, the CCL Bravo channel, which exclamation point. Uh, Bravo will get you the hard link or if you want to watch both streams at once I think uh, exclamation point multi-stream has a little bit of a link where you can watch us side by side again we're not partnered so we don't have the ability to do a squad stream with our uh, brother or sister stream if you'll call it that but like you mentioned it's going to be Gunrunner for the hard point coming up and again we talked about how the first map was hacked in the yard that was where UTA likely wanted to go as that's their best map in hard point for Gunrunner they're just one and one on it their loss came to Arizona State. Their one, their win, uh, pardon me, came to Utah. Uh, both games, not necessarily too terribly close. Actually, I beg your pardon. Arizona State's game was only a 25-point differential, so it was a tight one. But on the opposite side for Purdue here, you mentioned it. You're looking at Benji. This is a 7-0 map for Purdue. Not <laughs> what you want to hear if you're a UTA fan. Nope, not at all. Not at all, but you have to be able to take that slaying factor that you saw from domination in some brighter spots from the Hackney Yard, which was relatively close. It was 250 to 221 on Hackney Yard hardpoint to where UTA were able to find themselves a sufficient amount of kills early on to start taking the lead early on. And now you're going to be looking for the same thing. But the scariest part on starting off on the west side of the map is you have to force your way into Purdue's stronghold. That's the munitions depot. You have to be able to flip spawns for P2. Purdue Esports, though, they're going to be pushed back on the back end of Omega Finding 3 before getting traded out. And it's going to be a convincing or some points going over towards P1 in favor of UTA, but all these kills got to mean more. Off of respawn, Purdue just march on forward. When you find those many kills, UTA, you got to start taking the showers away. You got to start pushing players through the coal mines so that way you can try to find yourself a pinch to at least flip the spawns. Don't worry about P1. You got to be looking towards P2 here. Couple of kills coming through, lead to an opportunity, but Vanish Tom able to come and help out Kanani just in the nick of time. Here comes a cold push though from UTA, trying to make a play for the water tower. Two members on the push through. That's gonna lead to not just one kill, but a second over the middle of the map. Here's the pressure, Kid Dragon. He's gonna be with XO, as he was for a time before Proxy finds the kill. Vanish Tom takes down Kid Dragon, and as soon as the munitions depot opens up for our second hard point, Purdue will find the initial bit of time. This is gonna be really tough now. Not the strongest setup that Purdue could potentially be looking for. You got players over by the cargo containers, but they were able to win their gunfights. And well, with the other two players spawning over by the AC unit, Purdue Esports are going to look to fend back Summit for a certain amount of time. We're just down to 30 seconds. And now with UTA Summit, potentially one last good hit at this. You got to be wary because player number four, that's going to be Proxy, is already working their way across mid-map. And the rest of the members of Summit are just going to end up taking this rotation to get the initial time onto P3. Proxy gets snuffed out by Omega, and that's a big kill. Now you got to worry about Benji. They're past the oil turbine. It's going to be working their way into the backside. But for the initial time, still holding strong, Summit are looking to get P3. But again, they let, ooh, I was about to say, they let Sauce potentially get into boxes. Beyond that, Benji's also made his way through the backside, and he could really cause a headache for UTA, who I don't believe anyone knows that he's back here as of yet. He's going to wait for the timing of the pitch. Beautiful pickup as Kid Dragon's able to deal with him nicely. And now Purdue being stalled out a little bit in the middle of the map. This is a good zone for UTA. They're doing a really nice job controlling and making sure they're stalling the pace of Purdue as they try to make their way forward. But how long will that stall stay in place? Couple of trades back and forth. Now it comes down to the secondary set of gunfights. You have to win these out of your UTA. Purdue's threatening. They're making their way in. But again, in the kill feed, you see it. It's a four for one trade and UTA are able to hold on be able to hold on for the time being this is going to be a very influential hill for them this is going to be able to set themselves up for potential scrap to initial time big kill on the vanish tom right there 
for Linga, and Magic B-Man is going to be able to take down Kanani. So kills coming through over by the cargo containers are going to be really good, but Purdue Esports are too wise for it. Off of respawn, they start flooding their numbers in here. They put down the trophy system, keeping themselves alive. Linga and Exo combine for four now. So this is going to enable them to start pushing on forward to push Purdue Esports off. 50 seconds left in the cargo containers. They have a very good setup to get a sufficient amount of time here. This is a beautiful setup for UTA. You've got your AR exactly where you want it. You've got players watching over the middle of the map. You've got more that are likely to cut into bathroom. And for you, they're going to be hitting this one dimensionally. And UTA, just simply put, have the numbers so they can keep contesting this, keep fighting this. It's going to come down to one more 2v2. This time, though, Purdue does take the victory in that final exchange of gunfights. And they will break, but it doesn't come at a cost. You surely think, yes, it does, because UTA, they're still holding onto the P5 spawn, and they have one more attempt to potentially break for a little bit of the contest on the scrap time. Gonna get one more hit there. Gonna get taken down with his Magic B Man and Kid Dragon, trying to go for at least a few exit eliminations. Omega's gonna be able to find one there on a Kanani. And Vanish Tom's gonna be able to get that trade mid green. So now this is going to be a very good moment of time to where the. the Hill has flipped over towards P5. Vanish Tom and Saucer are able to find two, but Omega and Linga answer on back. Spawning over by the coal mines, though, is a player that's going to be Magic B-Man, so they're going to set themselves up a pretty decent crossfire. But now UTA Summit look to influence, if not 40-plus tier on P5. Not only will that mean that they take the lead, but that'll just put a giant dent in towards Purdue. And at the front doors, Purdue get met by a handful of bullets. It's just going to come down to Sauce to find Linga on the backside. They are joined in here by Proxy, but you need a lot more just to break in towards P5 if you want to sufficiently take that in your name. But Proxy, though, able to play their life ever so wonderfully, is able to take down both Kid Dragon and Magic. Benji comes in to take down Linga, and this is going to be the break that Purdue need in the P5. Yeah, a little bit of an er too early of a rotation for UTA, trying to cut their way through Cole to get to the P2 side. It looks like the gunfights will mostly turn up in their favor as they should get the spawns for P2, at least initially. There it is. As soon as the first hard point opens up, Exo will spawn in that second hard point specifically. But Kanani is the thorn in the side now as he continues to finesse his way through the backside of the cargo containers. A couple of trades coming over the middle of the map now being that not only are Purdue putting on the pressure for P2, but they're also securing a lot of time here on our center platform. Proxy, very diligently, holding for any reinforcements coming from the cargo container side. Not enough to fully get Kid Dragon, but he will eventually be shrugged off the hard point. And with that, Purdue will be forced to essentially reset, but not before they find just enough favor to get through cargo. And now they've actually put the spawns for P2. Again, bad meets worse here for UTA. Yeah, UTA now are just spawning over by P5 again. They have to somehow find themselves into P2 where Purdue in the first set of hard points found themselves 40 plus. It's going to be really tough now. UTA are able to find a decent amount of kills mid-map. Sauce is able to trade for two before going down. But still, you have to somehow work your way past these train carts in towards the munitions depot. And that kill on the Vanish Tom might have been beautiful. If more soon to follow, but Kanani, Benji, and Proxy are right there to find oh, four. Fending them off before they even had a single chance. We're on P2. Initial time go over towards Purdue. And this is just going to be real tough. Kid Dragon trying to make a flank play happen. But it's going to be met by Vanish Tom. And this is just now, again, you say bad meets worse. It is getting dire for UTA. It absolutely is. You need to find a way to contest some of this last 30 seconds. You do not want to see this go to a 200 to 127 total. But again, Purdue is playing this beautifully. If they lose these last 20, they are in a position to where they're already spawning towards the rotation side of this hill, which is up towards Water Tower to get to P3 quickly. Not only do they win the battle for the scrap 20 seconds, but now they're on their high horses to make this rotation quickly to P3. Vanish Tom will put himself all the way in the back of the warehouse, tries to take one more double peek does get cut down, but UTA, who's still spawning by the cargo containers, have no idea what do they want to do. Do they want to hit one or two more players for that final scrap 10? Do we want to cut mid-map to try to work the middle in our favor? And with that little bit of a uh, undecided nature, Purdue has won a very Ooh. convincing kill feed, and they will very early on contest and potentially break. Maybe not. Kid Dragon's already found three. He's still got a full life to play with, and he will eventually be dealt with. But now Purdue, not just knocking on the door, but bursting right through it as they look to break P3. Yeah, Kid 
Kid Dragon find themselves a series of headshots is going to be good all, all, all while. Summit have been spawning in towards P5. They can keep flooding numbers in here towards the stairs, which you would think would be good, but not when you're running into the gunnies of Purdue. They have this angle locked and loaded vantage tom is right there to find three along with prox who's also on three straight and that's going to be a full-on wipe of a kill feed purdue esports wipe in the floor with summit only four seconds left in p3 but take a look at the mini map you have players three and five that's kanani and sauce are already by the cargo containers yes you end up losing kanani but sauce is right here for the initial time and they play their life wonderfully they find two one with Sentex, and then the smg benji comes back in and adds a little bit of extra on the xo for this initial time, we're at 245, and players for a summit, they gotta start real and they gotta start flooding, but no players are near. Vanish Tom is gonna be right there to meet them at the gate. Purdue Esports are gonna close this out in four, 250 to 137 on Hardpoint Gunrunner. Really clean gameplay from Purdue, and the Dom, even cleaner gameplay here in the level for Hardpoint. Again, this is one of their best maps that they were able to showcase throughout the regular season. It continues to look like a major strength for them here in the playoffs, and for UTA, Oh, man, woulda, coulda, shoulda on the first map. Again, I think that if you were to look at this one just from the on the paper, the statistics alone, the only way that you think that UTA potentially upsets Purdue is by sending it to a game five. And it felt like because of the map mode of Hackney Yard Hardpoint up first, that was a map that they had to win if they wanted to have a chance in the series, and they just quite weren't able to do it. So as you see it there, 250-137 would be the final for map number four. Purdue take their winner's round one matchup 3-1. But I will say, proper, it doesn't come without cause for concern because now they move forward into the bracket where, again, you're going to be going up against harder and tougher respawn teams. And my biggest worry for this Purdue team is their search and destroy. You're not going to win this bracket. You're not going to win the championship of the Collegiate Cod Series in Season 2 just on the backhand of, uh, of just your respawn play. No, you're <laughs> Search and destroy, they win matches. They win tournaments, they gave you championships. If you end up pushing things to a map five, like you said, tougher opponents are coming down the line that will end up being able to squeak out that map for hardpoint and sending things to a search. So you can't end up just saying, well, we'll just win the uh, hardpoint domination and uh, potentially that other hardpoint too. Momentum is a thing. And for stronger teams that they're looking on down the bracket too, I mean, yeah, you got Grossmont uh, further along the line, but if they end up winning their winners round two, you're looking at Texas A&M Maroon. And that's going to be a yeah. tough matchup within its own self. I mean, that's a that's the team right there that can end up closing out Search and Destroy. We'll end up meeting your pressure and we'll be meeting your gunny there, Benji, uh, and Proxy. So you got to be careful of that along the way, too. That Search and Destroy, it's got to get cleaned up sooner rather than later, especially if you want to see yourself on the winner's side of this bracket later on down the line. 100% agree. And then we can take a look at our full bracket here, starting off with the top side, if possible, as this is where all of our 830 matchups have existed for the most part. And you see it at the very top, like we hit before, Concord Maroon, no problem versus Oklahoma State, as you would figure. Arizona State got the 3-0 by way of forfeit from Liberty Red. UT Dallas not having an issue with Butler whatsoever. How about this, though? Going on currently in the Bravo stream, Illinois Orange is going map number five with Oregon. I imagine as soon as we wrap things up here, we'll send a host their way as they're just actually kicking off in the game. It's a St. Petro destroy for map number five. Texas A&M Maroon able to take a 3-0 versus St. Clair and the Saints. Bowling Green State and Grand Canyon apparently have not started their matchup yet. That one was slated to start at 8.30, but I know that some of the players may have been having a couple of connection issues initially. This one will read as a 3-1 here as it actually live updates. Thank you very much. Grossmont and Northern <laughs> Iowa, no problem for Grossmont as they not only took a very convincing first two maps, but they beat Northern Iowa by almost 100 points on the Dom. And then we go down to our losers, or not losers, but our lower side bracket. We've got Humber and Arkansas. That was played on Wednesday. No problem really there for Humber, although it was tight in the first couple of maps. They still finished it with a pretty convincing period at the end of map number four. Lebanon Valley was one of our upsets of the evening as they took a 3-0 versus Alabama. Full Sail had a tight map number one versus RIT, but beyond that, not too much of an issue in the second or the third. Penn State White rolled through UT Knoxville and the Vols. Georgia Southern Penn State Blue slated to start later this evening. Carlton and Mississippi State, that match act just 
just got underway not too long ago. But the bigger and I think the biggest storyline so far, the number 27 seed of Louisiana Lafayette took a 3-1 versus Rutgers Scarlet. And we saw the 3-0 from Louisiana Tech going up against Maryland. Uh, anything in particular standing out to you proper from our first day of action so far? I, th- I think it goes without saying is that you all all squad, the Raging Cajuns, taking uh, taking the 3-1 victory over Rutgers Scarlet. I mean, you go back to that search. It was a 6-0 where Rutgers uh, were able to walk away with it too. A very close domination. It was a 158-145 to score line. 250 to 230 was the first hard point. 250 to 237 was the second hard point. Rutgers Scarlet were right there the entire time, but something something happened with ULL uh, in a waking a beast. Maybe it was me yesterday. I'm not too sure. I don't really care what it was too, but this is really good for ULL going on forward <laughs> as they're going to be looking to take on uh, LA Tech that now just comes down to consistency that if this team is able to showcase their talent side uh, that they showcase at the kickoff tournament that we saw at the beginning of our season, Alan. Yeah, this is, is going to be a team that's you, you can't bat an eyelash at. You can't just take them for granted because they are very talented players, and you have to keep them in mind every single time that you go into a match against them. Yeah, 100% the case. And again, uh, for our alpha stream here on College Cod, all of the action will kick back off tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time as we'll jump to a loser's round one matchup. Not 100% sure what that matchup will be, but it'll be somewhere between the Southeast and the Northeast, which is on the lower part of your loser's bracket if you're navigating with us. And then we'll come back to the winner's round two. And the one that we currently have slated is Full Sail playing up against Penn State White. Sure to be a barn burner, to be sure. But beyond that, we've got a full day worth of games going on, not just here on Toach.tv slash College Cod, but also on the Bravo channel, which we're about to host so we can all catch this game number five. We'll be signing off for the evening, but you'll catch myself and Proper as well as Infinity and Visions tomorrow here on the Alpha stream for a full day of College Cod playoffs. You're not going to want to miss it. So make sure you hit the follow button on your way out until tomorrow morning. I hope you guys all keep holding it down. 